Chicago sweep here would all but wreck any Ranger hopes. One positive note for Texas going in, Pud Rodriguez was back in the lineup. This following cheekbone surgery on Friday. What a quick recovery. Facing Jason Beret and Rodriguez, rounds out. This ends his streak of eight straight hits. Top of the first now, and Juan Gonzalez is up. And talk about streaking, how about this ball? To center. His 32nd leads the league now. Bonds has 31, and Bo Jackson says, happy fifth birthday, son. In the fourth, Bo lets his bat do the wishing. This is 11th, a solo shot, and this one is tied at two. Save the bat and give it to your son for a present. Socks up 3-2 in the sixth, and Bobby Thigpen on. And he hits Dean Palmer with the bases loaded. Then he walks, Doug Strange on four straight, and Mario Diaz comes to the plate. Look out. Another hit batsman. Rangers score five runs on only one hit, although two hit batsmen. Top ninth is 8-7. Lance Johnson to right. Steve Sachs scores from first. Part of a three for five night for Johnson. Bottom ninth, Don Paul. He's got a runner on third. And he throws it wild. Lavalier can't hang on. Manny Lee comes in to score. The game winning run. The Rangers win it 9 8 in a game that lasted 19 hours. Nine pitchers were used. The Sox snap a six game winning streak. Now Palmero came in. He's facing Jim Abbott. The second place hitter, Roberto Alomar. Two strikes. Called strike three by Joe Brinkman. Alomar was not happy. It was the first of 12 straight that Abbott retired, but it was Alomar retired for the rest of the night. Thrown out of the game by Brinkman. He goes berserk. Cito Gaston tries to defend his player. Cito gets tossed as well. The Blue Jays were up in arms in the early going. To the bottom of the first, this game scoreless. Runners on the corners, no out. Mattingly lines one the other way. Willie Cañate with the catch and the gun, and Wade Box is absolutely out at the plate. Bottom of the second now for Todd Stottlemyre. Man on first. Bernie Williams hits it. Alomar's out of the game. Alfredo Griffin playing second gets the nice force at second. 43,300 at the stadium going crazy. Bottom of the fourth, bases loaded. Mike Stanley, three grand slams this year. Stottlemyre, a great at-bat. Pitched him with breaking stuff down and away. The entire at-bat, a lazy fly ball, ends the threat. Top of the fifth, still scoreless, and Abbott still has it going. Tony Fernandez, the comebacker that Abbott turns into a 1-6-3. Scoreless through five. To the sixth, the Jays break out. A man on for Devo, a good pitch, a slider on the inside half of the plate and hits the screen. A two-run homer for Devon White, who's not going to be hitting in that spot anymore. Ricky will be the leadoff hitter. Todd Stottlemyre pitched very well and leaves a 4 nothing winner. He called eight hits over seven, did Stottlemyre. The best game he pitched all year. Melito Perez, Yankee starter who got cuffed on Friday. The fourth place O's were hosting Milwaukee. Odd stuff going on this year. Look at Fernando kick it. Keek over to first base and David Segui picks it up for the out. It is 5-4 Milwaukee. Bottom of the seventh with a man on. Harold Reynolds and sacrifice bunt. John Jaha to second. And Brady Anderson is called safe by Durwood. Merrill says he's emphatically off the base. Watch it again. He was out. They don't have the benefit of replay. The Brewers wish they did in this case. Clearly an incorrect call. Two batters later, it's Mike Devereaux. Q shot off the end of the bat. Graham Lloyd, the Aussie, does not touch him. And Devereaux's on. Bill Garner says he was out of the baseline to no avail. He was called safe. So the O's tie it on a sack fly. Then Jeff Tackett only hitting because Chris Hoyles has a strained muscle. Tackett gets the game winning his. The O's go on to win 7-5. His first RBI since May 20th. This is the first pitch of the game and it's gone. Deep to left, his seventh. That sets the stage. The Pirates up one zip. Top of the fourth. They're loaded with one out. Bucks up 3-2. Scott Bullet to center. Sammy Sosa is there. Makes the play. Sammy, Sammy. Sammy, wake up. Sammy, there's only one out. And Al Martin scores. It's the board's fault. It's got to be the board's fault. Cubs enter the fifth down by six runs, but with two out and two on, it's 8-5 for pinch hitter Doug Jennings. That one is lifted to right, and it leaves. Off of Paul Wagner. Jennings second. Three-run homer ties it at eight. It's gone. Top of the six, same score. Garcia, already with two homers, gets hit on the hand by Bob Scanlon. Payback? Yes, it is. Ross Minor behind Mark Race. The benches would clear. Al Martin had some words for Scanlon. Everyone had words for everyone else. 
Jim Leland says his team is cautious about getting into situations like these. Minor, Scanlon, and Al Martin were rejected. After all the touching and shoving and pushing, we had the calmer heads whew, prevailing. Leland back on the bench. Lefevre settling the troops, still bottom of the six. We're still tied at eight until Bouchel goes to left and it leaves. His ninth, and the Cubs are up 10-8. Top of the seven, it's 11-9. Jose Batista, Lonnie Smith, you're hit. And Leland was livid, saying the first two incidents, they were maybe acceptable, but Batista got away with something, didn't he? Lonnie Smith and Bill Verton ejected oh, in the ninth. All total, we have six ejections, seven home runs. And despite the brawling, Cub skipper Jim Lefebvre was optimistic afterwards, saying, I'm not conceding anything. If we keep playing like we have been in the second half, Maybe we can start climbing over people like the Expos, and then the Cards, and then who knows. To Montreal for the Expos and the Mets in a game filled with defense. Top of the eighth, the Mets are up 4-2, and he's trying to run, and he's nailed. Moises Salou gets Jeff Kent. More D in the ninth. Marquise Grissom will challenge the arm of Darren Fletcher. Marquise, thanks for playing our game. Final play of the game, Tim Spears on second, John Franco. Facing Will Cordero, it's to third. Watch how many people touch the ball on this play. Benita Murray to Kent, to Hundley. Oh boy. <laughs> Somebody put a tag on him, thank you. How did that play go? Five, three, four, two, five, one, five. Do not try and dial that number, guaranteed, wrong number. Kent had another good day, three for three. Benia Orsalak, two hits each. Dennis Martinez still very much an expo. Montreal's GM Dan Duquette said, seven game slide. Willie Blair is on the mound and Kevin Mitchell is at the plate. And the Rockies show why they're on that losing skid. Dante Bichette, oh brother, it goes all the way. Two run score, Mitchell ends up on third. Bichette did add three hits in the game. Reds up three zip in the fifth, runners on first and second, Joe Oliver. Nobody can make a mistake on this one. A three-run shot is 10th. The Reds lead 6-zip, go on to win 6-2. Castillo went 3-4 for four for Colorado with a home run. Smiley with successful surgery. He's in center field. Ray Langford's hitting it there, and Carr lays out. Oh, what a great catch. In the fifth, though, Langford would hit it where Carr and the rest of them ain't. Pulls it to right. His fourth home run of the year. Charlie Huff was wondering why he wasn't pinch hitting. Brian Jordan had a good night. He had a triple, double, and two runs scored. The cards by a pair, 5-3. Lee Smith getting his 37th save. Greg, 17 starts, but he gets cuffed early. Pete Incavilia, what power there. Lines a homer to the opposite field. His 17th of the year, fourth in three games. Phillies lead 3-0. But Greg Olson returns the favor off of Terry Mulholland in the fifth. A 419-foot homer, if you needed to know the distance, and the Phillies chopped the lead to one. Sixth inning, runners at the corners, and Inky again, another hit. No, Jeff Blauser, great stop. A great play with two outs to end the inning, but in the seventh, Blauser not as lucky. Swinging bunt by Mulholland, could have been a 4-6-3, throw a little low. McGriff, by the time he picks it up, West Chamberlain scores. The Phillies lead. A Dave Holland's homer, a very important insurance run as Philadelphia beats Atlanta 5-3. Mo Holland has won three straight decisions. No walks Wednesday night, or Tuesday night, I should say. It is a giant one-run lead for only seconds until Phil Clark unloads with a three-run blast and the pods lead 7-5. San Diego going for more. Phil Plantier shot to center field. A sure home run. You want a good catch in Baltimore? How about this one at the Murph? Darren Lewis among the catches of the year for the extension. He continues his 282 games without an error. This should be an error. This is an embarrassment. That's a joke. Robbie Thompson's easiest double ever. Will Clark a, a little less easy on the ball. This a triple that bust this game wide open. Clark had a homer, six RBI, one shy of his career high. The Giants win 72 games already this year, as many as they won last year, winning this game by the score of 12-7. The Pods made three errors on Tuesday, 102 on the season. Derek. Four in the seventh. Brent Gage tries to bunt. He's 6'10 and uses every last inch 
to make the diving grab to the top of the ninth. Tied at four, Dave Valley against Edwin Nunez. Base hit. The pitcher, Eric Hansen, pinch running. The pitchers do all that running, and it pays off. The Mariners win the game 5-4. Johnson's first win in five weeks. He struck out 12 in this game, 40 of his 199 strikeouts this year against Oakland. Paquette and Sierra, two hits in the losing cause for Oakland. Let's take it to Cleveland now, where they passed last year's attendance total with Tuesday's Tiger Indian crowd. We got a chance to see a drive by Wayne Kirby into the gap, scoring Kenny Lofton. Lofton scored four times. Look at Junior Ortiz yucking it up with Cecil. The laugh would be on the Indians. It's Lofton with another one, a triple that scores Ortiz. 3-2, next hitter, Kirby. Taking Sean Bergman deep to right, a two-run blast, Kirby's fifth of the year. This game was range-shortened in Dome can be an adventure, even for the home team. Andre Dawson lifts the lazy fly ball to left. Pedro Munoz has no clue. None at all. The Hawk will end up with a double. Two innings later, Mo Vaughn. Pedro Munoz once again has no clue. This time it falls behind him. Big Mo ends up with a double. Well, Munoz has to be a little embarrassed, but neither of his mishaps led to a run in the seventh. G, uh, Greg Harris to Kirby Puckett. This will lead to three runs. 12th on the year at 6-1 to one, Twins. And that is the way it ended. Puckett goes two for four with the three RBIs. Boston just their fourth loss in the last 18 games. Willie Banks is ERA in his eight wins, 2.20. The third two on for Donnie Baseball. Doubles to left off Pat Henkin. And Ricky knows how to play to Karam. Wade comes in and Ricky heads up. Goes to third and gets Deion James. The Yankees led it three to nothing. And Henkin is upset with his performance. In the sixth, the Yankees leading 4-3, but not for long. Steve Howell facing Roberto Alomar. Alomar had a tremendous night. Brings in Ed Sprague to tie the game at four. Well, Steve Howell, like Pat Henkin, upset. In the eighth, Jays up 5-4. Steve Farr against Paul Molitor. The sacks are juiced. Two runs come in. Jays go up 8-4. We go to the bottom of the ninth. It's now 8-5, to five, two on for Danny Tartable, making a bid to tie it, and nearly did. Boggs will score, and the tying run now at second with two outs. Cito Gaston couldn't get Dwayne Ward up to warm up in time, so he brought in the former Yankee, Al Leiter, to face Paul O'Neill. Lefty against lefty, and the Blue Jays left the ball yard with the victory. Sprague ends it. The Jays hang on to win it by the final of 8-6. to six. Ricky, in his debut, had a base hit, two walks, two runs scored. Henkin allowed four runs on 12 hits in eight innings. Overs up 2 no, nothing, and uh, bases loaded. Juan Bell at the plate. He rips the bullet. Bruno scores. Dickie Thon scores. It's 4 nothing. Brewers. Still in the second, and the Orioles coming back. Tim Hewlett off Ricky Bonus. He hadn't homered since last September. It's 4-3 Brewers. Then the defense took over. There are more great catches at Camden Yards than any other ballpark in baseball, perhaps combined. Mike Devereaux brings it back, robbing Yount of a home run. Well, then it's Yount's turn. Not against Devereaux, against Harold Baines. Tied at five, the O's break it open. Devereaux says nobody's going to catch this one. Brady Anderson scores, McLemore scores. The Orioles score a victory, winning it by the final of 13 to eight. Milwaukee has lost six of their last seven. They're 21 games under 500. And that's Batman, Frank Thomas, and that is Robin, Robin Ventura, away from Gotham City. Robin with the deep shot off the villain Jeff Bronke. Off the wall, and Robin's three for five, two doubles, two RBIs. Scores fellow superhero Bo Jackson. Then it's Batman's turn. This one leaves the yard in a hurry. The dynamic duo had a big night. Or is it out? Commissioner Gordon says yes. Batman, three run homer, 28th on the year. Batman, four for five on the night. And then the Cape Crusader goes after the Commissioner Gordon right there. And Commissioner Gordon says, you don't look like Adam West at all. White Sox win it by the final of 11 to 6. Chicago has won seven of their last eight. Batman, Frank Thomas, big hurt. Third four-hit game of the year. Ventura, Robin, three hits, extending his hit streak to 10 games. The Royals in Anaheim at the Big A. Whitey Herzog watching his past and present teams. Stan Belinda leaving the Pirates, his current team, the Royals. Hoping he would be the setup man. He did.
on. Set up Greg Myers. Got all of it. Sixth on the year. And the Angels pick up the victory. The two-run homer as they win it by the final. Oh, three to two. Angels have won five of their last seven. Langston scatters seven hits, struck out six in eight innings. Stadium on Tuesday night. Benito Santiago in the second off of Donovan Osborne. And a simple second inning homer makes it one nothing. That would be enough for Charlie Huff, who had terrific command of his knuckleball in the bullpen. They say when it's tumbling, you're going to have problems. When it's dancing, the hitters have problems. The hitters had plenty of problems with the knuckleball of Huff on Tuesday night. Eight innings, no earned runs. Charlie Huff, a terrific performance, and the Marlins win. Harvey makes it stick, 1-0. Huff, by the way, 5-0 when his 15-year-old son Aaron is in the stands. He's 1-11 when Aaron's not there. This game right now is that Bichette has to hit a two-run homer. And Gale would prove to be Jack Buck-like or clairvoyant. Dante does it. Two pitches after Gale set it, two-run homer. Rocks lead 4-3. This team is begging for a win. Colorado has been struggling. They've lost eight consecutive games. Mom, send a win. Oh, they just sent trouble. Hal Morris in the ninth. Base hit. Bip Roberts scores from second, so no blown save for Dibble. A blown save, but an opportunity to get a win out of it. And his team would, because the two Dons would watch Joe Oliver hit a sack fly in the tenth. And Cincinnati wins 5-4. By the way, Andres Galarraga, enjoy Tuesday night, because after Wednesday night, he will no longer be number one. And a pitching to Larry Walker. Talk about good aim. In there. In there for a book rule double. Marquise Grissom scores 1-0 Spose. Jeff Fasaro pitching his fifth career start. And Felipe Alou, after this one, said, that's my number three starter. Fasaro goes into the seventh, gives up seven hits, and pitched very well. Only gave up homer number 23 to Bobby Bowe, and Montreal wins 3-1. John Franco sent back to New York to have his sore right rib cage.